You do not get these oxidized lipids from saturated fats. You do not get these oxidized lipids from monounsaturated fats, which is what most of the natural fats in the human diet consist of. Overwhelmingly, when you look at ancestral fats coming from animal fats and fruit fats, fruit fats being coconuts, avocados, olives for the most part, they are almost totally uh, saturated and monounsaturated fats. And this, so this omega-6 polyunsaturated fat linoleic acid, it, it exists in nature, but to very, very low levels. We now eat over 50,000 times more of it than we did 100 years ago because it is in every processed food. And that is things like soybean oil, canola oil, corn oil, the so-called vegetable oils. So again, back to the data here. They, they, this study, the next study, and this was published in 2012, and the lead author is Christopher Ramsden at the National Institutes of Health, and the title is Lowering Dietary Linoleic Acid. They actually took people and had them change their diet to cut out, to cut back on linoleic acid, this omega-6 polyunsaturated fat. And they found that the levels of 9-hode and 13-hode, including in the LDL, dropped significantly. So they could directly lower the levels of, of these very reactive oxidized lipids. Importantly, they didn't do it by cutting back saturated fat because saturated fats don't contribute to these. So I'm sort of making the case here that our view on dietary fat has been totally wrong. We vilified saturated fat because saturated fat can, in some instances, increase LDL. But remember, LDL isn't the problem. It's a problem when the LDL is oxidized or it has these oxidized lipids that are almost entirely derived from linoleic acid, which is a polyunsaturated fat. Now, let's continue a little more with the actual mechanistic studies as I'm kind of nearing the end of this topic. There are two studies that I think are very compelling because it is as close as we can come to an actual clinical study, taking people, splitting them up into two groups, and that's what these two studies did, and they followed them for years so this is incredibly uncommon. It would not be done again in t in t today, in that nowadays, partly because you couldn't get ethical approval for it like they were able to back then in the, in the 60s, which is where these data um, kind of originate from, and they were just sort of rediscovered. So they took people into two groups. One, you eat saturated fat as your primary fat. The other, you eat this um, more polyunsaturated fats from these vegetable oils, so-called. And so the first of these two studies is published in 2016, but it was a reanalysis of data from decades ago, from the 60s. Um, both of these are. The first is called a reevaluation of the traditional diet heart hypothesis. And the other one is, um, uh, the, uh, is the Sydney Heart Study, <clears throat> where it's entitled Use of Dietary Linoleic Acid for Secondary Prevention. Um, now, both of these, what they found was that they had significant groups of people and they had the two groups, they split them up into the two groups that I just mentioned. One group eating more saturated fat, one group eating more polyunsaturated fat, mostly omega-6, linoleic acid. And guess who died the most? It was the group eating the higher amounts of linoleic acid. They had higher overall mortality, so actually died at a higher rate. And then in the Minnesota reanalysis data, they found that heart disease was the same. It wasn't heart disease that was killing them. But in the Sydney um, diet heart study, so this other kind of corresponding data set from Australia, they found that, in fact, death from heart disease was significantly higher. This is the closest we can come to addressing the concerns when people say, well, saturated fat will kill you. Our response can be no, because the closest studies we have, the two things we have that approach a clinical study, the Minnesota coronary experiment and the Sydney diet heart study, absolutely refute that hypothesis, which is why it wasn't published at the time. It took a reanalysis of old data that the scientists found too inconvenient in order to really find the truth of it, which was that the group eating more saturated fat lived longer, had lower mortality, and in fact, lower heart disease deaths than the group eating more linoleic acid. And then <clears throat> one last um, comment on this, was a published study just from uh, a couple, two weeks ago in the British Medical Journal. 
And I, uh, we will make sure this link gets in there because I wasn't intending on describing it. I just had to because the data is coming still in real time. This is absolutely a correlational study. So it's just surveys. Um, in, in this instance, it was from 21 countries involving tens of thousands of people. And they found that one of the strongest links to heart disease death and, and, and an overall death was eating refined grains. Now, that brings in a new angle here. I would only mention that because that further takes the attention away from saturated fat. They didn't find meat was the problem in this correlational study. It was the consumption of refined grains. And this is um, coming more from what's called the PURE study, P-U-R-E, that anyone can look up and read this. So the old paradigm, I guess to kind of wrap this up, the old paradigm that saturated fat will kill you from heart disease is based on correlational studies. This idea that you go into countries and just give people questionnaires and just sort of look 10 years later and see who died from what based on the questionnaires of what they were eating. There are tremendous problems with that, um, including people being honest and including how you're accounting for different foods. But even if you only look at correlational data, more and more correlational data refutes that old, those old conclusions from correlational data. So we can use correlational data to beat out or at least cancel out correlational data. And then as we tease through the mechanisms, as I've touched on with some of these manuscripts, and perhaps the only two clinical studies that have ever attempted to answer this question, the whole traditional dogmatic view of saturated fat and heart disease falls apart. And if fat matters, and I think it does, then it's much more likely to be a problem of polyunsaturated fats, specifically linoleic acid, the, the most primary omega-6 fat that is the likely culprit. And to those who think that they don't need it, if you are eating the bulk of your foods from uh, refined foods that are coming from bags and boxes with barcodes, almost every processed food you have in the grocery store, then it is very likely that linoleic acid is the single most commonly consumed fat in your diet. Because in the United States, soybean oil is the number one consumed fat. Shortening, which is also enriched with these, um, seed, these industrial seed oils, is number two. And we don't need any more of our fat from beef now than we did 100 years ago uh, from, from, from these fatty meats. And so even there, the correlation starts to fall apart.